Hello, and welcome to Bearing in Mind Beer Reviews. And today we're going to begin a series of uh, Lambic beers from uh, the brewery, which is called Lindemans in Belgium. Uh, we're going to look at five different fruited Lambics, and then finally we will look at their Faro, which is a, uh, a sugared Lambic. And I'm going to look at them in order of alcohol strength, just uh, for no reason, except that we're moving up the scale. These are all very, very low alcohol. The uh, first one will start out at 2.5% alcohol, in fact. Uh, Lindemans is located uh, uh, a few kilometers outside of Brussels, and they are well known for their lambics and their uh, artisanal gins, which they make as well. Uh, they've been going since 1822, and they're now in their sixth generation of family brewers, uh, and so quite a, quite a history. Um, they're most famous for these fruited lambics, but they also make a few other styles that are considered much, uh, much more highly, I think. Um, in, in any case, lambic is a beer which uh, undergoes what's called spontaneous fermentation. Uh, in other words, it's not inoculated with uh, yeast, uh, as uh, most beer is, to produce alcohol and flavors and aromas. Um, what happens is the, the uh, beer is brewed, often uh, uh, combinations of barley and wheat, uh, and, and the, after the wort is boiled and cooled, uh, they take it up to uh, a higher area up higher in the house or the brewing area and spread it out into some shallow cooling trays. Uh, uh, the Dutch word is cool ship and in English it somehow just become a folk translation, cool ship. Um, these are large, uh, very wide cooling trays and the, the uh, cool, the wort is set up there to cool overnight and the windows uh, dormers are opened and the wild yeast floats in and inoculates the wort. Uh, and the area around Brussels has a uh, concentration of uh, very strong wild yeast. Uh, the most commonly known one is called Brett or Brettanomyces. And uh, it's a wild yeast. And so it comes in on the wind with maybe some other microflora. Um, and then after one night, it's put into fermenters, uh, into lar very large uh, wooden barrels called foders. And it's fermented for about six months there. Uh, some places use foders. Uh, and for example, Rodenbach is very famous for having a lot of foders. Uh, and others use stainless steel and throw in wood chips to provide the, the wood atmosphere, the wood uh, effect on the beer. And after, after about six months or so, uh, it is matured in, uh, for an additional six months. And then uh, some lambics are bottled and others are blended to make uh, what's called goose. And goose is a blend of young and old lambics. So they may take a one-year-old lambic and blend it with a three-year-old lambic and and uh, try to create some interesting flavors. Uh, this is the real magic, I think, of, of uh, uh, making an interesting beer, uh, very similar to what winemakers do. Uh, the wood is also similar to what winemakers do as well. But blending, it's a kind of a, a point where the science leaves off and the art takes over, or maybe we could say craft takes over, uh, deciding when and how much of each part of the age of the lambic should be put into another age and, and that's that sort of thing. Um, and so uh, Lindemans produces a variety again of fruit lambics and they also produce some other beers you may be more interested in. The fruit lambics are not terribly exceptional uh, in quality. They're interesting, but not the best. Uh, if you can find their Goose uh, Cuvée Varnay, or one they make with Mikeller, which is called Spontan Basil, or uh, their Old Lambic. Uh, any of those three will give you a very different experience, I think. Okay, 
So uh, this is just a brief introduction to Lindemans, and now we're going to move on to the first of the uh, fruited lambics. So now let's look at the fifth uh, of our Lindemans fruited lambics, and this one is called Lindemans cassis lambic. And what you see are these uh, cassis fruits, uh, black currants, and these are included into the uh, the beer. They put black currants in and combine it with a uh, one year old lambic or a lambic that is at least one year old. And they've been making this beer since 1986, so it's kind of a long seller for them. Um, on rate beer, this one has 1,516 ratings for an average score of. 3.46 out of 5 and percentile scores of 77 among all beers and 33 for its style not terribly high and that again is lambic or fruit lambic and uh, some people say this resembles a uh, kind of a sparkling wine shall we see cassis is not used in a lot of beers uh, even among fruit beers, it's not so common. Okay, so what do we got here? Well, very dark purple, sort of grape juicy color, very almost electric pink head. Let's turn this around and see, see what it looks like through the light. Okay, and so the head is kind of compact, a little bit of sloppy lacing here, not too much aroma. Definitely get the grapes, berries, some barnyard there, some light funky funkiness, maybe a touch of manure. Sour grape juice, mid palate it goes kind of acidic uh, and tangy, and a bit of tongue scraping astringency in the uh, back end. A lot of berries in this for sure. Again, grape or maybe some light cherry, dark berries. Um, this is nice. It's, it is a bit acidic. Uh, so among the fruited varieties of Lambic that Lindemans makes, this one is uh, probably the most acidic one I've had so far. Um, so, and I do understand when they say sparkling wine here. So the carbonation is quite, quite heavy here. Mm. And the astringency sets it apart. The, so definitely in the aroma, you get a certain kind of lambic sense. Uh, not quite as much in flavor. But uh, interesting beer. Uh, one of the more interesting ones among these uh, fruited lambics from Lindemann's. 3.5% uh, beer. Very low in alcohol. Um, and I think the Lindemann series, again, is our, uh, a good introduction to the uh, fruit lambics. Uh, not hard to take at all. Uh, some lambics are, can be, of course, shocking uh, on first sip, and this might be a nice introduction, a way to get into lambics. Okay, so again, Lindemann's Cassis Lambic, give it a try if you happen to see it. Uh, leave me a comment and uh, subscribe to the channel. We will be doing a lot more different kinds of beers. I tend to focus on Japanese craft beers, but uh, I do beers from all around the world as well. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.